Well, I'm very excited to be joined by Mohammed Ibrahim, the renowned researcher, Egyptologist, and tour guide who will be hosting our Megalithic Marvels in Egypt tour this May. Mohammed, thank you so much for joining me today. You're welcome, uh, Dee. It's also always a pleasure to uh, be in your show. Yeah, to everybody watching, Mohammed and I want to invite you to join us on the trip of a lifetime, a 12-day expedition to see and touch the world's greatest superstructures on the 2023 Megalithic Marvels of Egypt tour. While mainstream history tells us that the dynastic Egyptians who existed around 3000 BC built most of the great pyramids as tombs, on our tour, we're going to examine the evidence that points to an advanced civilization that predated the Pharaonic dynasties and who used lost ancient technology to engineer these megaton wonders. Muhammad, um, what makes your tours special compared to the millions of other tours to Egypt that are out there? That is a great question. Look, I can tell you honestly, there are so many tour companies are very good and they can offer uh, so many great tours, accommodation, food. But in our tour, we, we combine between two or three factors cannot exist in any other tour. I am the tour guide with this different type of knowledge. And also I am the tour host and I am the decision maker during the tour. So my point is that if I see anything is not going well, in one second, we can fix it. Before this happened, I put the, the itinerary of the tour according to my background and my feelings and my uh, experience uh, doing these tours for 20 years. But other companies, they do the itinerary according to the experience of a person who is always in his office, not in the field like me. So I know when to visit Luxor Temple, when to visit Abydos, uh, morning or evening, uh, what time to visit Banjara, Aswan, Okay, so the itinerary we put, this is a very special itinerary based on the experience of 20 years in the field. And as I told you, I am the decision maker. If I see anything is not well, is not the best quality, in within five seconds, the decision will be made to change it, to update or upgrade or to fix any uh, mistakes or, or to enhance, okay? Uh, the uh, the most important thing also in our tours that our relationship with the officials, which can help us in uh, overcome some problems, uh, we do private permissions, which is one of the most important things in our tour. We all open closed doors, and we have uh, free time inside these sites. Only our group for two hours after the closing time. So we enjoy the whole area. We enjoy the pure energy of the site for two hours. Okay, that is something not easy to be done by other tour companies. Okay, uh, and finally, we do this for love. I, I don't deny that, yes, money is a, a good reason for this, but love is more than money. Passion, um, uh, so our target is to make our participants feel happy, uh, that's fight. Uh, and because this is our target, money will come in anyhow. We will do our best and money will eventually come on, on the way, okay? But it is not number one, it is passion and it is to create so many friends. I can tell you, I have hundreds of thousands of friends now all over the world, okay? And I was very happy when I announced I'm going to England and to visit the British Museum, many of my, uh, they are friends now, but they used to be clients in the beginning. They were happy to receive me, invite me, join me at the, the museum, invited me for lunch. So that was super exciting for me. And I felt like a great uh, blessing because sometimes when you buy a service from somebody and then it is done, then, you may forget who uh, served you, okay? But if you remember this person, so it means that he was doing a great job with you. And I think another thing to point out is, like when we're going to a lot of these sites in ancient Egypt, you see other tour groups and they're, they're walking around, but Muhammad, it's like you take us 
to the most special places of each site. For example, um, I remember when we were visiting Karnak, the world's largest temple. You know, there's so many things to see. There's massive columns. But you took us to this, this knocked over obelisk that featured precision drill holes inside of it. Okay, to us who are looking for evidence of lost technology, this was one of the most amazing things to see at this site, this ancient obelisk with precision drill holes in it, but everybody else has no clue it's there. That's what I love about how you uh, take us on tours. Exactly. I didn't mention this in the beginning because people who uh, visit Egypt for the first time uh, uh, with uh, regular tours, they may not know the difference. They will be excited. They will be happy. Okay. But second time, especially if, if, I, if they come in a tour like mine, they know the big difference. They realize that, no, the, the first time was not uh, very good. Uh, and as you mentioned, uh, we go to certain places. Um, most of the uh, other tour guides uh, don't go there. Not only the site, but also the time. Uh, if you uh, pay attention to uh, the, the, the time when we go into the site, and if you uh, have a look, like wide look to the groups surrounding us, after 30 minutes, they will disappear because they will be in their way going out, okay? A maximum one hour. But that is for us will be just the beginning. So we take as much as we can uh, inside each site, okay? Uh, we explore, of course, we see the highlights, but we explore the very special uh, sections and, and the very important sections, uh, especially if we talk about uh, the uh, energy, if we talk about uh, ancient technology, if we talk about magic, if we talk about techniques of constructions, okay? So it is also the timing, how much time we spend in each site. You grew up in the shadow of the Great Pyramids, right? I mean, you grew up there in Egypt. And tell us, because uh, you're not just a tour guide, which that is a huge part of what you are, but um, a lot of people don't realize you're an actual studied Egyptologist, and not just anybody can become an Egyptologist. You have to devote yourself to years of study. Tell us just a little bit about that really quick. And how did you become one of the rare Egyptologists who also believes that a megalithic civilization predated the dynastic Egyptians and built the pyramids. Yes, as you said, that I literally I grew up yes in the shadow, but not the Great Pyramid Saqqara, the shadow of Saqqara. So in, imagine a young boy like me when I used to open the window uh, in our kitchen, I was able to see Saqqara pyramid from our kitchen every morning, every morning. Look from the, the window, I see it's a car pyramid. Uh, our house was four uh, floors. It was like small building, okay, uh, separate uh, apartments. So we lived in the third apartment. So when I, when I used to go to the top roof, I could see the entire of Saqqara, the pyramids of Dahshur, could see Abu Sir, and from a distance I could see Giza pyramids. So in um, if I like walk for uh, 30 or 40 minutes, I would go to uh, Memphis Museum. Uh, the, the trip to Saqqara was like a piece of cake, it was something very easy. I could do it in, in, in uh, any time, uh, any day uh, during the week. Um, um, our school, prep school and primary school, they used to take us to field uh, trips to Saqqara, to Dahshur, okay, so that was, uh, my first time to get attracted to these sites and to get attracted to that job, to become a tour guide, okay? Uh, when I finished high school and I went to the university, Faculty of Tourism and Hotels. Yeah, I know the name looks more uh, related to tourism, okay? But there is a section for tour guides and in, in this division, we studied everything about Egypt. And, and I, I say it correctly, Egypt. I didn't say ancient Egypt because we studied ancient Egypt. We studied Greek, Greek-Roman Egypt. We studied Coptic Egypt, Islamic Egypt. We studied all the Islamic dynasties who ruled Egypt from 700 AD or exactly 642 AD till the Ottoman Empire, 1500 AD. 
we started uh, the all the the battles, uh, all the uh, invasions, all the cultures and civilizations till uh, 1950, 1965. Okay? So I can tell you, I studied me and my colleagues all the Egyptian history from thousands of years ago or BC till almost 2000 AD. That's why, and not only history, but also religion, art, language, um, uh, literature. Okay, uh, we studied the uh, also social uh, life. We studied medicine, not in, in deep details, of course, but we started to have like, uh, like a piece of fruit from each tree. That gave me the chance to read more but I was able to understand what kind of reading I need, what kind of books I can buy. Because as an example, they give us a small hint about the prehistoric uh, Egyptians, okay? Uh, when I graduated, I started to uh, find these books about uh, the early history of ancient Egypt. And that I found that this part is magical. And, and this part can give us so many information, so many hidden, uh, information about ancient Egypt, and uh, many people didn't didn't pay attention to the prehistoric times because they expected that prehistory, the prehistory of Egypt, is just for primitive people. It was primitive civilization, but I found the opposite. That uh, it seemed that the there was at, at the beginning I sought one civilization, but now I can say many advanced civilizations before what we call it ancient Egypt or what I we can call it now, the dynastic Egyptians, which started 3000 BC and ended, ended almost 300 BC. Another question I get from people, I guess I'll set this up with, our last tour was in the middle of all the worldwide lockdowns. I remember, you know, going to Egypt last year, you had to either have a uh, vaccine or a negative COVID-19 test. This year, that's all gone. There's no vaccine required, right? There's no negative test to show. Thank God. Um, tell us how much easier is it to travel to Egypt this this time now after all that stuff has ended? I can tell you that we back to normal in Egypt as if we are not in COVID. All the restrictions are gone, maybe in, in very limited ways, like it is one or two museums. They require you to put the mask uh, when you the face mask when you are getting inside, and maybe inside you you don't have to wear it. Okay, but it became like more like a, a routine. But uh, uh, to fly to Egypt, no vaccine is required. No uh, quarantine. Uh, no uh, medical uh, uh, people will check your uh, uh, vaccine uh, papers or documents. Uh, no PCR test required anymore. Okay, so uh, flying to Egypt, either to Egypt or out of Egypt, became uh, like before 2020. Okay, uh, so it became very easy now. Egypt, uh, no kind of insurance is required. Okay, uh, although people, if some people, they want to uh, keep wearing the mask or to uh, uh, be be restricted, it is their choice. No problem. Okay, but the uh, the majority who are afraid or they ha are concerned about the restrictions, I can tell them no, and the the numbers uh, of COVID in Egypt are very low, okay, especially in uh, because of our weather, as you know, and you experience this, it's hot most of the time or warm. Okay, we don't have that cold uh, winter as Europe or other countries. Okay, so I think COVID is not a big deal in Egypt. And then people ask also about, is Egypt safe? Uh, and I tell them that, man, there's 10 million plus tourists that come to Egypt every year, I believe. Tell us about the safety of Egypt. Uh, you can tell us about the safety in Egypt. You <laughs> visited <laughs> Egypt. <laughs> no, I felt completely safe. I'll start out saying I felt like the Egyptian people, for the most part, were very hospitable and helpful, kind. Mm -hmm. And uh, I never felt once did we have a dangerous experience on our on our tour. Women do not need to wear head coverings. There's a lot of Western influence you see everywhere. It's a little bit different in some of the smaller villages. But overall, I felt like it was uh, safe. And then 
our tour, I, and it seems like a lot of tours have a private security guard as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, look, I always say it is not because uh, the uh, travel agencies, uh, tour guides or security, you know, it is the, the people who are um, uh, the main reason of the uh, security is for local people or foreigners. And as you said, uh, for all Europeans, all nationalities, men, women, women with uh, in a company of men or women alone, they are all uh, safe in Egypt during the day, during the night, even after midnight. Okay. So in, in, the, in the Egyptian streets, if you walk in any street after midnight, as if you walk like uh, 7 p.m., uh, Cairo is a non-sleeping city. And the, the Egyptian in their nature, they are not violent people at all. And they are always uh, feel that it is uh, a great shame if any foreigner will uh, get attacked in uh, our street or in our uh, country. Um, the, uh, the main business in Egypt now, or the main industry, is tourism. So that is why we are trying to do the best to keep this industry safe. Okay, so in general, Egypt is safe, but also if there are some troubles, the government will do anything to make it safer, because this is our main uh, industry and our main source of uh, foreign currency. So I can tell the people to come to Egypt, be you will feel completely safe maybe the only issue you will face if you face something in egypt is someone trying to hustle you or to sell you something a vendor or a kind of, uh, of a hustler that is the only but their target is only some few dollars from you and that's it but no violent no crimes okay or any kind of uh, these uh, annoying things for uh, tourists yeah it's probably safer in a lot of places in Egypt and a lot of our major cities in the U.S. where crime is exploding, unfortunately. So one of the highlights of our tour is going to be our private after hours, two hour long visit inside the Great Pyramid of Giza. And I was absolutely blown away last year on our private tour inside the Great Pyramid. And I want to set this up and ask you, Mohammed, it's crazy because mainstream uh, history or archaeology or Egyptology tells us that, again, the pyramids were built simply as tombs by the dynastic Egyptians. Well, it's one thing to read that, but once you go in the pyramid, you realize this thing is not even really functional for humans to be climbing through. Uh, I mean, I could barely ascend and descend some of those 300-foot passageways with the modern day wooden stairs and railings they've put in how in the world would an, an ancient egyptian funeral procession have walked through the pyramids with relics and statues and ornaments that that steep you can't do it you would have slidden down on those smooth uh granite surfaces so that was one thing that jumped out to me is this thing does not even seem functional to be used as a tomb. Uh, what are your thoughts and theories regarding the Great Pyramid and what it might have been in ages past? Look, when I debate with my colleagues, I always use very simple logic. And telling them, okay, if we agree that the king is going to build a pyramid to be his tomb, how long the pyramid will take, in, in your opinion, asking my colleague? So the, uh, the estimate time, they think about 20 years, because this at the time was mentioned in the uh, history book of Herodotus, the Greek traveler who came to Egypt. So I tell them, okay, 20 years, that is very risky uh, uh, order or uh, plan, because the king can die in any year after giving the order of the pyramid to be built. So in this case, where the king is going to be buried. And, and that pyramid will not be completed if the king died today and the pyramid is 50%. So no way to finish the 50% in a short time, in a week or so. Okay. And the second king is going to start his new pyramid and the third and the fourth. So this is what I call it the impossible uh, plan. Okay. Uh, and it is now very easy to debunk in the story that the pyramid was built to be a tool. 
but we can approve the second story or if we can fix this story that the pyramid was used as a tool. That makes more sense, okay? And the pyramid, and you know, I used to say that the pyramid was used as a tomb. It was a kind of um, like uh, the king was trying to bring or to put himself in a fancy place in, an, uh, in a pyramid. And it's like a fancy parian. Uh, no, my, my latest opinions are completely different now. I think that the king wanted to receive the energy of the pyramid. The king wanted to cross through portals. The king wanted to be, uh, to have the chance to may, maybe come back to the first life or to use the, the energy of the pyramid to uh, cross. Or, it is a kind of a spiritual uh, uh, aspect. It is not just a silly king wanted to be buried in that famous structure. No, my, my guessing now, no. So I believe that they understood that the pyramid is a generator of energy. And when we say generator of energy, not necessarily this limited option only. I can tell you that the pyramid was proved to have hundreds of functions, not just one or two, many, many functions. And I believe every time we, we dig and search deeper, we will find more functions to the pyramid. So one of the functions of the pyramid it's a place to collect the cosmic waves and, and the, what we call it the Moan uh, waves. And that kind of Moan waves is the one they use it now to create pictures to the interior of the pyramid, okay? X-ray and uh, other types of rays couldn't uh, go through and give us uh, a good picture of the interior of the pyramid. So I believe those kings who uh, maybe yes, maybe not buried themselves inside the pyramid. It was a way to get a ticket to the afterlife, but not the regular after afterlife. No, it was a way to explore or to give the chance to their maybe body or uh, soul to explore uh, other dimensions. Because that, uh, what they used to hear from the priest when the priest was explaining the energy and the power of the pyramid. So that is my idea about the, and this is what we feel when we do that private visit, okay? And the, the beauty of the private visit is you go in a time there is nobody else, okay? And that's why, and I, I believe you, of course, and all my uh, clients in, in my tours in the last 20 years had felt the same. When we go to Giza Plateau, uh, second or third day of the trip, uh, in what we call it the public visit. They enjoy Giza Plateau, they enjoy the uh, stories and everything. But when we go again at the end of the tour, they see different Giza Plateau. They feel different Giza Plateau. They enjoy different atmosphere, different environment, because there are nobody there except our group is a small or big group. And that is for two hours. That is a privilege. Uh, is not uh, easy for almost 90 or 95 percent of the visitors of Egypt. There are some rare vintage photos of this mysterious pyramidal structure, Muhammad, that you call the Egypt Area 51. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? Okay. Uh, there are many pyramids in Egypt, uh, more than uh, 20. Uh, what we can call them true pyramids. Is a, is a decent pyramid have all the components. And by the way, when we say pyramid, we are not talking about just one structure, which is that building, uh, the, the, what we call it pyramid. No, it is a complex, what we can call it pyramid complex, consists of uh, around 13 components. Includes the pyramid itself, includes two temples, or what we call it temples. Uh, sometimes includes a small uh, pyramid, one or three, like in uh, the Great Pyramid as an example. Sometimes none, like the second pyramid in Giza Plateau. Uh, also, there is a foundation under the ground. And that foundation, in my opinion, is the, the, the most important part of the pyramid, uh, under the base of the pyramid. So we have uh, two famous examples in Egypt. 
a place in the north of the Great Pyramid called Aporawash. And this place, we can go and see what is uh, under the, the foundation because the upper structure uh, is gone. And another place south of Giza Plateau, north of Saqqara called Abusir, in an Abusir area, or no, a little bit north of Abusir. Uh, and that pyramid, uh, we didn't find anything can say that there was any upper structure. Okay, but from the, uh, the foundation, we understand for sure that it must be one day they, they built a pyramid or they were about to build a pyramid. My guessing there was a pyramid. So that one day that the whole structure was complete, but the blocks were taken by the locals through ages. And what we understand that also uh, we cannot date that pyramid or relate this pyramid to a certain king, but that pyramid is very old. And even if we follow the mainstream history, that pyramid could be during dynasty two. Okay, not dynasty three or four or five. And that, uh, as you know, will lead to my famous story about the existence of a previous civilization in ancient, ancient Egypt. Only that king in the second dynasty add his name on some small pieces. But the name was at, uh, is very interesting. That name has uh, a title before what we call it the cartouche, that oval shape contains the name. That title called Saba or Saba, which is the name of my tour company. And if you wanna uh, understand the word Saba, what does it mean? If you look to the logo of my company, you will see it clear. Star, a gate, a gate next to the star. So Saba means a star gate. And that is the meaning from the ancient Egyptian uh, uh, language. So Saba, and then the name of the king. And also the name of the king also is interesting name. Uh, it is called Kha'ba, or sometimes we call it Kha, uh, Kaaba. Uh, the, the spirit and the soul. So Stargate, spirit, soul. Okay, so it, it is a way to lead us to understand that this pyramid is somehow dealing with the other dimensions, dealing with something not physical. So that's why they target the spirit and the soul of the person. Uh, I think uh, during 1960 or close 65, 62, 63, uh, the uh, Egyptian government uh, made a, a small uh, unit, army unit, or let's say like, a, uh, the fence and they surrounded the area and they the place is uh, considered as uh, an army area from that time so it is not accessible uh, there is no photos there is no permissions all the photos we have uh, before 1960 uh, so we don't have any update of the shape of the, the place uh, there is a very uh, interesting and what I can call it mystical granite box uh, in the in the uh, base of that uh, room, that giant room in the lower level of the ground, the the, the box is about 100 tons or more. Uh, why I say more? Because as I told you, we only have all the photos, and it doesn't show us uh, uh, like detailed information or good details. Okay, uh, there is a very strange shape of a lid from granite was a kind of two knobs from, from the, uh, not from the sides, but from the, the big body. It looks like also like two bases of electricity, like what we see in the electric towers, those towers in the desert side. So those big heads, they uh, uh, put the wire on something similar on that uh, lid of uh, the granite box. Okay, so everything, uh, connected with the, this uh, uh, temple or this uh, pyramid, we call it uh, the Nazlet Al Aryan or Zawiyat Al Aryan, Zawiyat Al Aryan pyramid. Everything connected with this pyramid is very strange and unique. Okay, and, but the most strange thing is why they don't let us have permissions to go and to inspect and to see. Uh, what is going on. There is something else that maybe this pyramid is the one who got all the, the fame, but there is another one, by the way. 
close to this pyramid. And uh, that second one maybe still have the upper structure. Okay. And I think also it has the same type of titles uh, leading to the same meaning. Uh, but the second pyramid still have the upper structure. But not many people, maybe like 10, 20 people all over the world know about this pyramid. Yeah, I mean, the photo. I recently, I recently have uh, the, this idea, this opinion, uh, sorry, th this information. Yeah, this photo is absolutely incredible. Again, this is a very old photo. I don't know if this is from the 30s or 40s, but it shows this man underground. So this is subterranean standing on this massive megalithic granite box with a cutout. It has to be at least a hundred tons, but the most amazing part is this cylindrical opening on the top, this oval shaped lid uh, opening with a lip. And then there's that lid with these knobs. Any idea what that lid was for? No ideas, but my guessing it is a way to link wires, okay? Uh, and the, these wires will be linked with something else. So it must be devices were there one day and was were taken, of course. And do you call or it- other, Or other uh, pieces will, would fit, okay? With the opposite design and would fit uh, above this uh, design. And do you call it the Area 51 just because it's so off limits and you can't see it anymore? Is that the biggest reason why? Yeah, the, something like this. Because, yes, you cannot approach the area like the same Area 51. Okay, uh, so many, I will not call it phenomenons, but let's say we, we have so many things unexplained. Uh, and the idea that this pyramid may be connected was uh, that, that title, Stargate, because we didn't find any other pyramid had the same title. So this is the only title, and maybe the other pyramid too, I just mentioned, they, they have the title Stargate. Okay. Maybe the other pyramids too, but we didn't find yet anything can prove the, this meaning or this title. Yeah, on this tour, uh, you're going to receive exclusive access to see and touch the megalithic marvels of Egypt up close, learn about the hidden history of Egypt uh, from Muhammad, meet new friends in a friendly and inclusive environment, and uh, Muhammad pulling from his 20 plus years of guiding tours, I can say firsthand puts a real personal touch uh, on, on these tours, and he's going to take us where most tourists, again, won't take you to eat the best local food. We're going to stay at some of the nicest hotels. And most importantly, we're going to see the most mesmerizing megalithic parts of each site. And uh, like he said, from cruising down the Nile River, man, what an experience that is. Drinking coffee on the Nile with a gentle breeze blowing over your face to soaring in a hot air balloon over the Luxor Sunrise or riding camels alongside the Giza Pyramid. Our Egypt adventure will be the trip of a lifetime. We hope that you will join us and uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, if you have any questions at all, you can go to uh, info at megalithicmarvels.com. We hope you'll enjoy us and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks, Mohammed. You're welcome, Dee.